Okay, so I'm giving you a brief tour of my work on the Pueblo Let's Build. This is the um, Hemis Pueblo, but I am not going to be able to reproduce that, and I don't think it's right that I ought to. I'm going to sort of be doing a generic Pueblo, which is hard to do considering they're thousands of years old and span all the way from Central America all over the continental U.S. and parts of Canada and so on. They're big structures. Again, another magic thunderstorm. That was the great earth back there. These are uh, residential dwellings. Uh, they look a lot like the um, ruins. There's a ship. They build a fence to keep the livestock out. All the animals came to help and caused a lot of trouble. Here's the roof of the second floor. I used fence posts to try to replicate the ladders. Of course, we can't lean ladders at an angle, so restricting me. Now I'm on the roof of the great room looking at the thunder and lightning. This is behind the Pueblo, uh, my pumpkin farm, and there's now a huge wheat farm back there. All of this has been spiffed up and has uh, wood slab roofs and so on now storeroom this is inside the mountain dug into the mountain and this will eventually run the entire length and be a big storeroom work area all the cobble is where there was dirt and I replaced it other than that I used the native smooth stone that was already there so this is it under construction notice that the stairs the upside down stairs and the roof slabs are oak wood I tore all that out and replaced it with jungle wood because it looks more pinkish, which matches the clay that I'm trying to incorporate in it. I think the clay effect is really beautiful. And I don't want it to look like a prison yard or an old hotel by being all cobbly and stuff. So here's where I've begun landscaping the ground. Gravel paths, adding sand because it's slightly pink and adding clay of course this is the old kiva at i don't remember which place it's from in this I can't look. but i wanted to show that many kivas are subterranean this one's above ground this is in chaco canyon it's an ancient one from about oh 1500 2000 years ago this is the in interior of mine I tried to use as much authentic architecture as I could, even though I can't lean ladders and stuff. Fire put. That back there is actually the chimney. The smoke goes up through that hole. Um, I used paintings that represent seasons and times of day. I'm not going to try to imitate native art. I think that's very disrespectful. This is the inside of a great kiva down in Mexico, an Aztec kiva. I wanted to try to replicate the rectangular structures, even though I don't know what they are. Uh, I used a little bit of cocoa beans to represent electric lights. Uh, there's a great deal of diversity among Pueblo and structures. Some people have electricity and running water and plumbing. Some people don't. Uh, if you want those things, you can live elsewhere on the reservation, but not in the Pueblo structure itself. This prevents the smoke from setting ladder on fire. This is how the ladder should be. Now, the ladder can lean all the way to the edge, but, uh, of course, I just had to have mine go up the wall. That, that's the super poo, that tiny little hole in there. That leads back to where the ancient people came from in their traditional belief uh, that we all originated. So a tiny little hole in, from the underworld that the super poo is a hopey word. The gravel paths are beginning to expand a little, and I realize I'm not going to be putting buildings in the plaza area. Uh, this is a rather old one. You can tell by the photograph that's about 200 years ago. A lot of these pueblos are still in continuous residency, occupancy. Um, notice I put uh, jack-o'-lanterns in the ground so I can tell where I put the dang fence gates. Otherwise, if cooties are after me or something, I'll just get killed because I can't tell fence posts and fences. Here's where I've replaced the half slab roof and the upside down stairs for the support beams. This light picture no longer exists, but it's filmed, so I thought I would show it to you. It 
isn't appropriate to the culture. And it's an ice where it takes up too much space and obscures the view. Showing you some of the uh, blue doors at Taos Pueblo, uh, Cochiti Pueblo, and other places use blue also. Some say it wards off evil spirits, but then people like to think natives are just superstitious and backward. Uh, some say that the blue is sky blue because insects are repelled by blue so they won't go up toward the sky and die. Others say it represents one of the four directions, um, which is northeast, southwest, northwest, and southeast, not north, southeast, and west. So let's give you an idea of some of the variation in what happens with blue doors, and I'll post a link to that blog. I made mine out of lapis lazuli. I suppose a more appropriate color would have been pale blue wool, and I do have pale blue sheep. I just really like the vibrancy, and I have seen pale blue, I have seen Taos blue doors or Pueblo blue doors that are that vibrant blue. And so I was on the right track of each person's door is separate, de decorated slightly differently within the confines of Minecraft. Here's a what I'm calling a more modern pub, uh, excuse me, Kiba. It's not finished yet. I just want you to see the basic interior structure when it doesn't have a lot of clutter in the way. Made lighting fixtures in the insets. Posted a, a jack-o'-lantern and then put half stairs in front to obscure the jack-o'-lantern. Uh, and behind, in the back corner, it's underneath a little pool, so I made a water feature, and I put in a little garden. Er, I even hung some vines because it would be cool and moist back there. And back in the little corner back there, I even planted a couple of mushrooms, uh, just because I can. The uh, bushes are actually lighting features. I dug a hole, placed a jack-o'-lantern, and built bushes over the top of them. So they help light the area without the lighting pictures actually being visible. Uh, this will all be blocked off so that golems and testificates won't be able to climb up here, but I will. I'm putting in gates. See how I obscured the jack-o'-lantern with an item frame? And in this case, I put a cedar in it. You're going to have to fool with those because depending on the way the door is hanging, it'll knock it off the wall when you open and close the door. The rest of the lighting features are obscured with the uh, trap doors. All these doors are exposed to direct sunlight, which means it's going to be testificate heaven in here. On the very back wall, I have built a staircase going all the way up, not to the third floor because they could get out and cooties could get them. Cooties can't spawn on half slabs, so it's relatively safe. And there will be a back wall so that cooties can't accidentally wander in and fall down a hole and start killing people. Uh, going back down to the great room, I've improved the stair system quite a bit. I mean, the ladder system quite a bit. But the best way to get around in here is, instead of going through this warren of tiny little rooms, is to just go up on the roof and go from one end to the other and then go back down a ladder. This is a great room. I've actually been in a great room like this on Second Mesa in on Hopi land. It did not have a table. I placed a table just for the dynamic of the room, uh, my lighting fixture. Uh, I also added a fireplace. Remember, I'm kind of modifying part Minecraft and part uh, Pueblo, and I hope this isn't disrespectful, but different Pueblo people do things in different ways. And a great room is just like it would be in any community center. Um, furniture can be brought in and out. That table can be extended. Uh, people sit along the walls there. That's traditional seating style. Anyway, that'd be for like banquets or uh, even teaching classes or computer stuff. Or It depends on the pueblo. depends on the people, what they want to do. <laughs> Excuse me. I've also started doing the um, other wing. Mostly just digging it out. Uh, by the time you're seeing this, there's actually roof on most of this. And I've dug into the uh, hillside so that it's two rooms deep. I mean, two rooms in. It's not. It's going to be two rooms tall, too. Uh, not three. And here's a little bit of the landscaping. You see I've already put in some roof as I'm standing on it. 
uh, again, insert pumpkins in the ground by one block and build bushes over the top and it adds really good dynamic lighting without you having to look at light fixtures all over the place. There's my well, little spruce wood roof on it. I had the well up right about where I'm pointing now, but again it obscured the view of the Pueblo, made it look too cluttered and crowded, so I moved the well back farther into the courtyard. You can plant pretty much anything as long as you have a block of water near it, and then after the uh, plants have matured, you can remove the block of water, and as long as nobody jumps on them, as long as you place them so that nobody can jump on them, they should be okay. I'm extending grass blocks to this dirt over here because I think it would look awful pretty uh, to have plants in front of that corner. And I put a seating area in front of the great room so people can come outside and have picnics or just sit around and talk or have a meeting or work on projects together or build things or whatever. Yes, I do now have a dog. And you see this side area is improving immensely. I've had to put a fence across here to keep the animals out. Too much help. They're too curious. They really want to participate. And they really get in the way. Plus, they were escaping. I would have to stop working, grab some wheat, and go keep the animals from leaking out. My well. Again, I'm extending grass from... That's a temporary spruce grove so that I have spruce wood. It's just for lumbering purposes. But I'm extending the grass out so that it'll go all the way around the well, too, because as I... um tilled the soil to plant things, of course, it won't turn into grass blocks now, so I need to make sure there's grass all the way around there, because I just think it looks prettier. But as soon as there is, I'll remove those blocks that are higher. I would like to remove most, but not all, of the native stone from this courtyard and replace it with gravel, sand, and clay uh, with patches of uh, grassy area and landscaping and um, shade shelters and other structures that and seating and furnishings that would naturally be or normally be in a Pueblo. So that's the progress I've made so far. I was kind of rushed and harried, but uh, give you an idea of what I'm up to. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.